Hey yo everyone, and welcome to this. Yes, it's been a while since I've made a video here, but you know, with the big news that came out today and the retirement of Peyton Manning, I just felt I had to come on here and give some thoughts on a player who really transcended a, gener a bunch of generations now and is, you know, definitely regarded as one of the best quarterbacks in NFL history and overall players. And, I mean, when you look at Peyton Manning's career, it's, you know, not just one moment that's going to remember or be remembered or, uh, you know, one big win. I mean, there's boatloads. But when I think of Peyton Manning's career, I mean, I think of resilience because... This guy had all the pressure in the world going back to when he entered the NFL back in 1998. Being the number one draft pick, as we've obviously seen time and time again, the amount of pressure on a player to succeed at that is something with beyond words really to describe what the pressure can be. Uh, Peyton obviously was drafted by Indianapolis in the heated who should go number one between Peyton or Ryan Leaf, and obviously the Indianapolis Colts made the right decision as uh, San Diego gets stuck with Ryan Leaf, and their franchise went even worse than where they were back in 98. But Peyton gets picked at first overall, and without Peyton Manning going to Indianapolis, the fortunes of these Indianapolis Colts never changed because Peyton Manning is, you know, obviously a game leader, uh, a reliable player, came through in the clutch for this team, but turned this franchise around because when this fran when they drafted uh, Peyton, obviously they got rid of Marshall Falk uh, at some point through the, the offseason, and, you know, that could have been something special with uh, Marshall in the backfield to be uh, solidified, you know, veteranish presence and someone that Peyton could lean on, but they were all on Peyton and his preparation. And Peyton then turned this franchise around. They went from almost a laughing stock and never getting it right in the draft to getting it right and becoming perennial contenders. And without Peyton Manning, you know, the Colts don't get, uh, you know, the Lucas Oil Stadium. They don't get Super Bowls. And they don't become a legitimate threat in the NFL. You know, even to this day, now that Peyton's gone, that's a franchise that, you know, for decades on decades was. A legitimate contender all because Peyton Manning had his presence over it and I mean he had all that pressure of being the number one draft pick and he came through did the dang thing for the Colts took him to countless AFC championship games and this is kind of where I get to the point of resilience I mean yes he's the number one draft pick and he proves his worth as a number one draft pick but gets into these AFC championship games or gets into the playoffs that could never win the big one or could never break on through to the other side to quote the doors could never get through there and then finally in 2006 he does he gets there takes the Colts they go on and win you know a, a lackluster Super Bowl uh, but still they went on to win a Super Bowl and did something that I think a lot of people didn't think Peyton Manning had in him so he was you know a resilient player and not only proving people wrong by being the number one or living up to the hype I should say of being the number one draft pick in the two, in the 98 draft then he finally gets it done with the Indianapolis Colts winning them a Super Bowl and they finally you know on Ulster that they beat the Patriots you know a team that it looked like they had all the answers on how to beat the Indianapolis Colts through the, the you know the years they embarrassed them in the 03 uh AFC Championship in at Foxborough, and it looked like you know this Colts team hadn't played a game together as a team all year in that 03 game. But they finally get through, and you know they win it for Peyton. He finally gets it right, and he gets his you know his due, and you know he battles through again. They get to the Super Bowl in 2009. They don't get it done against the Saints. Um, Super Bowl 46, I believe that was. They don't get it done there, and then you know Peyton has to have the the neck surgery. Um, and, you know, a lot of guys, that's probably it for them in their careers. Um, obviously, with that, you know, it leads to Indianapolis, you know, having the number one pick in the 2012 draft and then the separation between Manning and the Colts, and they get the Colts get luck. And then from there is more resilience because Peyton not only has to, has to you know, come through surgery, but he does something that a lot of people didn't think he could even play the game again um, and signs with Denver 
and makes Denver into an even more reliable uh, franchise. I mean, setting touchdown passing records in a season through 51, and I believe just a few years ago with the Broncos and their you know triumphant return to a Super Bowl, yeah, Super Bowl 48. But I mean, he's just a guy that was resilient time and time again, turning franchises around, being a great role model for the league. I mean, it's it's we don't get to see these types of guys, and I mean. It's we've we've seen tons of great quarterbacks in these this game, and I mean obviously the two most you know revered quarterbacks I think in football are you know Joe Montana. A lot of people say he's the best quarterback of all time, and you know you to me I don't see how you couldn't maybe disagree with that. And then there's Tom Brady, you know a guy that's been to what six Super Bowls now, and he's won you know four of them, uh, an, an amazing quarterback. But the thing with those guys is. Not a lot of people, when they entered the league, expected them to do any of that. They were, you know, unknown players coming on. To, I shouldn't say unknown, but a lot of people weren't expecting a lot of them. They weren't first-round draft picks. Manning's a first-round draft pick. Carried all that pressure through and then kept adding to the pressure and kept exceeding through the pressure. So it's a player that I think this league really needs to take into consideration of just how great he was for the league. Great ambassador for the league, doing tons of charity events. Um... And also showing, you know, a softer side of him. I mean, we've had players do that before. But Peyton, when you looked at him, he just seemed like the guy that only wanted to take game tape and take footage and just and, and playbooks and study with them. But, you know, his times on SNL or these Papa John's commercials or these nationwide commercials show you the real personality. And he's just one of these great players of our generation that I think, you know, it is going to be weird starting this September to see all these 32 teams in the with their quarterbacks and, all, and Peyton Manning won't be representing one of them. Um, I think, obviously, it's the right decision for him to retire. Uh, he looked like a guy that looked like the game had passed him by and all those the injuries, the neck surgeries had caught up to him. Um, and I'm happy he went out on top as he did. Sure, did he do much in those Super Bowls, in the in Super Bowl 50 last year against Carolina? Mm, not really. It was led by that great uh, Bronco defense. But he goes out as a champion, as the way he probably should and should be rewarded for that. Um, and I'm, I'm very happy for him on that. Um, the other thing, I mean, now he, as he retires, there's these allegations just before the end of the year with, from Al, J- Al Jazeera about him potentially using HGH. Um, have we heard much about that since, you know, uh, you know, late December, early January? No. Um, do I think we're going to hear anything from about that again? I'm not sure. Uh, but it doesn't seem like that story is building any traction as well since considering Al Jazeera in the States has now folded. And, of course, there's the apparent sexual assault case that happened with this time at the University of Tennessee. Do I think anything will be added more to that? I mean, unless something revolutionary comes out about it, I don't see any punishment or anything or this taking away any of his legacy from him, away from him. But, I mean, when you also look at another legend in sports who's hanging it up this year, Kobe Bryant, who, you know, had that huge rape trial back in Colorado in 2004 and he's going out as a hero I think we can kind of let Manny have a slide plus I mean I've heard a lot of reports that the woman making these accusations has been to be a known liar so uh, it's kind of hard to put a lot of stance in on this Um, but I think for Peyton it's been a great career there's been countless moments you know like I said whether it be the 2006 a AFC Championship game Monday night against you know a Super Bowl defending a legendary defense in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers had and they came back to win that game. Um, countless comebacks, leads the NFL in game winning drives with 56, 539 touchdowns. And when you look at the record books, he's number one in a lot of those statistics: touchdowns, yards, game winning drives, what have you. A player of our generation that I, it's really sad. I guess to see hang it up but a guy that was resilient and finally gets to go out on top and put all the the doubters and the haters behind and Peyton enjoy retirement enjoy as much Papa John's as you can enjoy anything that you have that you deserve because it was a marvelous career and I enjoyed watching you play the game so Peyton enjoy retirement